everyone, and welcome back to Versus Live. I am Todd Anderson. I'm Ross Miriam. We got Robbo over in the booth taking all your questions, comments, concerns, and or burns. Uh, we have two decks down. We have uh, Esper Hero up against the Gauntlet, uh, match one against uh, Azorius Aggro. Smushed it, 3-1. Pretty easy going. Match two against Simic Nexus. We thought it would be a little more lopsided in your favor. Ended up 2-2 two and two on the back of a minor mistake from you, but that just shows how easy it is for things to kind of fall apart if you make that minor mistake against Simic Nexus. Yeah, you, I mean, oftentimes when you make that mistake, you just don't get another turn, and mm -hmm. that's basically what happened, although it sort of spiraled a couple turns down the, down the line, uh, but definitely cut me off of a key turn the way I played, and, and it cost me the game, so that's definitely going to be a tough deck coming this weekend. You know, we, we saw the power of Tommy and Blaston giving it a lot more resilience to the yes. destructive elements that have plagued it for the last you know, three or four months. Yeah, uh, I think Tamiyo, a significant addition to the deck, very strong. Uh, commence the endgame as the finisher. There's a little bit of tension between that and some cheap one that I forget his name, the two-mana one that Brian Gottlieb... Callus dismissal. dismissal. Yeah, Brian Gottlieb wrote a tweet about it that basically said that if you're playing... Uh, uh, Commence the endgame instead of Cal's dismissal. You're just losing a slot, an interactive slot. And he might be right, because being able to have more like blink of an eye effects that generate a chump blocker early on that still act as a potential finisher once you take all the turns with Tamio and uh, Search for Escanta, Nexus of Fate, you know, uh, there there is some merit to to having that utility combined with your win condition. I'll say that. Yep. So uh definitely some food for thought there and uh, a deck that has surprisingly gained a lot from uh, this set and now we're going to look at a deck that was popular last fall fell off the sort of the face of the earth this last season yep. but has a lot of new toys to play around with to the point where it's difficult to figure out exactly how to build it yeah and I, I, that was one of the coolest things uh, once uh, Guilds of Ravnica was released back in what September October was all of these archetypes felt like there were two, three, four, five ways to build them. You know, um, is it you could go Drake heavy with Crackling Drake, Enigma Drake, um, or you could go, you know, a different route and actually start playing things like uh, Goblin Electromancer with Arclight Phoenix. And that was really interesting. And then even some bigger versions played main deck search for Escanta and ramped all the way up to Niv Mizzet in the main deck. And that was really cool too. Uh, now though, you know, after last season, such a poor performance, I don't know what happened. Maybe uh, you just couldn't beat the the Hydroid Crisis out of the Simic decks. Maybe they just out ground, ground you too, too hard. Um, maybe the control decks got a huge bump with things like Kaius Wrath and Mortify and that made uh, a lot of your plans fall apart who knows but i think the deck's going to come back in a big way uh and i think it's because of sahili sublime artificer and i think that that card in particular is a, a shining light in the in the deck that really needed some help yeah i think what happened to is it drakes is it became a bad mono blue aggro deck yes mono blue was just a lot better at getting a good threat down and protecting it and in the fall, Mono Blue had been too threat light in order to be a consistent competitor, but the addition of Terramander mm -hmm. uh, made that deck significantly better because it just really needed an extra cheap creature and needed an extra creature that in the late game could do a lot of damage by itself. Mm -hmm. So it gained a lot, ended up being a, a better choice if you wanted to play that kind of game plan where you were you know, making a big threat and protecting it with Dive Down and Spell Pierce. And then towards the end of the season, we saw decks learn to handle the mono blue uh, aggro deck. There's a lot more cheap removal around, a lot more Crawl Harpooners, Atsic and Archers, things like that. And those cards also hurt Is it? But now with these Planeswalkers that you have, the Izzet deck looks to have a lot more resilience. You've got uh, Ral, you've got Sahili, uh, you even have Narset if you want access to that. So you've got yep. access to a lot of ways to make sure that you're not getting as punished by being the less low to the ground deck that you don't need to be super aggressive yeah you can actually play a long game but you still have the potential to you know turn around and close the game out of nowhere if you land one of these drakes that are gigantic and then protect it for a turn yeah and i i think that that's the key right like there are some matchups that are super light on removal and having something like enigma drake or crackling drake is going to straight up win you the game a lot of times and uh then you're going to play against a deck that just has a ton of removal and they're going to kill the drake pretty easily uh, and you're going to need some other way to close the game and i think the Sahili sublime artificer is just a little bit hard enough and just efficient enough <coughs> to fill that role nicely and on top of that though i am bringing 
uh, an iteration that features a uh, uh, Rao Storm Conduit, and I wrote about Rao's uh, potential in more aggressive slanting decks uh, and how I think it, it could be really good in this style of deck because the, the chip damage from whenever you play an instant or sorcery starts to really matter when you actually can apply pressure to your opponent. Whereas in something like Team of Reclamation, it's pretty rare that the damage actually just kills your opponent. Uh, now, that can happen because the deck does generate an insane amount of mana, but long story short, you want uh, the ability for your chip damage to actually matter, and I think that a deck like this is one of the better ways to do that. Yeah, I agree, and it, it's still a card that can generate card advantage if you needed to do that, but also help you close the game, and that duality, dual purpose, is, is really important in a deck like this, because you do want to be able to play both kinds of game plans. Yeah. Because if you're going to be a controlling deck, you'd rather be, you know, an actual controlling deck. If you're going to be an aggro deck, you'd rather be mono blue. you got to be, you got to have some cards that pay you off for being in the middle. Right. Now, uh, I'll say this, uh... I don't have a lot of straight-up answers to Teferi. My burn spells are going to be Lava Coil and Shock and Beacon Bolt, and only Shock goes to the Teferi, so I can kill it if Frost decides to minus. But if he just starts plusing it, I'm pretty sure I'm just never going to be able to play it into speed again. No. I don't think yeah. you really need to play much at There's not that much. Spell Pierce. There's not that much. It but. does make it harder for you to hard for you to protect your threats. That's true. That's so true. Uh, luckily, this version, since we are more threat dense with the six planeswalkers, I'm not actually playing dive down. I'm just playing spell pierce as like the the bridge in the middle. Yep. Um. So hopefully that'll that'll come through. Uh. But uh, I lost match one and we tied match two, so I get to be on the play for match three. I think that's how that works. Unless you just want to roll for it, it's fine. I don't. I would assume that a tie would just maintain whoever went first in that match. Yeah. But, uh, which uh, was Oh, me, yeah, it was you. Because okay. I lost match one. Yeah, then you're good. Okay. All right. I'll be on the plus. Take a look at my opener. And we got lands and spells, so I'm going to keep. I, too, have lands and spells, and I, too, will keep. All right. Start with the mountain. I will start with a watery grave. So, Todd, where are your thuds? Uh, so, I think the thuds are a little too cheeky. I played a bunch with the deck on uh, MTG Arena, and it felt... Okay, but it felt like it was just missing a little something. Uh, we'll draw this one. Your turn. I'm not 100%, but I just felt like it was just missing something. All right, you want an Enigma Drake, Crackling Drake, or a Rao? Good question. Yeah. So, I, I mean, the Thuds, they did win me some game straight up, right? I played, like, quite a bit on, on Arena with it, and every time I drew Thud... It killed my, or every time I cast Thud, it killed my opponent. But a lot of the games were decided outside of that. So, don't think this game is ending anytime soon. And I think the Ral is the most powerful card. It's been that land. Do you okay. feel like Sahili's minus can kind of replace that, make damage out of nowhere? Yeah, I mean that, that's certainly uh, a thing for sure. Okay, to fairy bounce your Drake. Yep. Draw a card. You're up. Draw. Play it again. I guess your turn. Now, it's currently only a 2-4. We're going to try to keep track of that as best as possible. We have ways to check creatures. I really want to draw... Well, I don't want to say, but... A shock would be fine. A couple things would be fine. I don't think we have time to wait on a... Uh... On a discard spell, especially because Todd has multiple removal spells and a beacon bolt, so I'm just going to deputy to buy time here. Uh, play a tap land and plus my Teferi. Okay. Hopefully we can Todd spends his turn dealing with the Drake with the deputy and I can draw enter the God Eternals. So I want to use my mana efficiently, right? So I think I actually am supposed to just cast another Enigma Drake from hand as opposed to casting the lava coil on the deputy. So I think I'm gonna do that. Your turn. That way next turn I can basically play a two mana drake as opposed to a three mana drake because the one point of damage from the deputy doesn't matter and unlike hostage taker it's not like me waiting to kill the deputy matters that much hmm okay well i'm gonna play hero and then play another teferi get a token and bounce the enigma drake again let's get some tempo just going to shortcut those things and attack for one. Yep. Uh, 19. 19. You can go. All right. I'm going to beacon bolt the hero. Your turn. That is very good news for us. 
since now I get to use all my cards effectively. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to plus this. We're going to play a Soren. Yikes. We're going to minus the Soren on the hero. We're going to attack for two and gain two. So you're at 17, I'm at 22. And then I'm going to Thought Erasure you and trigger the hero. Um... So I think the choice here is going to be between Enigma Drake and Lava Coil. Mm -hmm. And Lava Coil is basically an Enigma Drake that deals with one of my 1-3s um, and can maybe be played alongside an Opt or uh, just more cheaply. So I think I take the Lava Coil. Yeah, I like that. It's also good against our Soren. So, and I'll... I have no idea if this card is good here. It doesn't do a whole lot. What I would want here is a removal spell. Yeah. Um, but it will, you know, maybe block for my planeswalkers. I think I need to try to do better than Thief of Sanity. You see, you also have a beacon bolt in your graveyard. Yeah, let's let's bid the thief. Okie doke, your turn. Yeah, even if I drew Thief next turn, I can talk to just Beacon Bolt it and deal with one of my walkers that way. Here, at least I have a, a shot at doing something sweet. Yeah, I agree with that. And uh, instead, I will do no sweet things. Let's play Perfect. this tapped. So this plus two. Four, so, so you go to 16, you go to 23. Yep. And plus we'll the plus the fairy. And. Um, that's the turn, I guess. Okay. Okay, I'll declare tax. Yep. Try to kill the fairy. Okay, perfect. Uh, he didn't kill my Enigma Drake last turn. I can't imagine that I shouldn't just play another Crackling Drake. So I'm going to shock. You go to 14? Yep. And your turn. Um, it's a little awkward, but not altogether bad. Um, let's play another deputy and get a token and deal with the crackling drake, I guess, so we can attack. It's a little worse if Todd has more removal coming. Um, I mean, you know I have the beacon bolt. Yeah, so... Uh, you're uh, you're having cards. I still I still think I want to get an attack in because mm -hmm. I'm also going to bring back this thief. And I like it, you know. If I guess if I do that, then you just get to kill this, get a blocker back for thief, and deal with the Soren. Ugh. So maybe I'm just supposed to hole up and and deputy and go like this. Just not attack. Just not attack. Maybe. I mean, I I have to like kill the dep a deputy, right? And I yeah. think that I just will always target the one with the crackling Drake. You miss five points of damage though, so it's yeah, like a five, five point life versus... swing versus a card. Yeah, a five point life swing is probably worth more, yeah. especially because nine. I gain I gain life off the Soren too. Yeah, so so I'm at twenty eight and you're yeah. at nine. That's gotta be worthwhile. Um, and then I'll play a tap land and pass. Okay. All right, I'm gonna. Kill the Sorn. Gonna play land. Gonna beacon bolt. Discarding charter course, I think. Which is mm, that's not good. Uh, no, I'll, I'll discard opt. Sorry. And then draw a card off the crackling Drake. Yep. And then I'll lava coil the deputy of detention with the Enigma Drake. Your turn. Yeah, that's not good. Five. So we have five in the grave and one in exile. So Crackling Drake is six. Enigmas are fives. Really needed to draw some of our higher end cards. Hostage Taker or uh, Enter the God Eternals or even Seraph. Time. 
Not a lot, but 28 is a hefty amount. I'm not going to kill you this turn. You can go. Yeah, but you might kill me in two turns. Well, you're definitely dead in two turns. Yeah, so I have one draw step. That's not a lot of time. Sure. Uh, okay. So I'm going to start off with charter course. I'm just going to try to maximize damage. Draw two. I spent the early turns of this game and I, Teferi and getting a little ahead, hoping to really just find one removal spell to cement my advantage and get on the on the on the front foot and didn't really find it. And so my my house of cards kind of fell apart. So that's six. Yep. So uh, eighteen. No, this is nineteen because I get plus one from the Oh the beacon bolt exile. Okay, so I'll go to nine. Okay. I'll play another crackling drink. Yep. Your turn. Okay, it's a good start. Mortify the untapped Crackling Drake, get a token. Not sure what I can draw, though. I don't think you have ways for me to kill two things. I don't know. Attack you to two. Okay. We'll just see. Oh, you get a shock! Is that the top card? Yeah, shock! Oh, you! Oh, you! <laughs> Got him! Man... I actually didn't think that you had that much damage on the battlefield. I could have played this way different. I, I suck. Okay, whatever. You were just so good at getting burn spells off the top. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, that's stupid. I, I could have not attacked with all my drakes. I could have just attacked with two and kept that from happening. Where do you go to refund a superpower? <laughs> good God. That sucked. All right, whatever. Should have won that game. I was very behind for a very long time in that game, and yeah, I just, I needed like one enter the God Eternals would have cemented my advantage by a huge amount. Um, even a Seraph would have been really good because it plays offense and defense, yeah. and I had taken your coil or a hostage taker to just take one and get it on my side, even if it's kind of small. Um, I mean, I think it would have been a four. That's all you need to be is four power to trade. No, I had a bunch of planeswalkers in my yard. Not no, you had a thought erasure, a mortify. Maybe that was it. But it, yeah, who cares? Whatever. All right. Any questions while we're shuffling up here for game two? Yes, uh, Ross. What did you think about including Dreadhorde invasion and Esper deck like this, possibly in the sideboard? Um, I'm not sure what it would be for. Uh, it's just a constant threat against control. Yeah, is that like your anti an anti control threat kind of card? Seems reasonable. The, the problem is I'd really want to play that card alongside Enter the God Eternal so I can like quickly get up to the six and gain back a bunch of life. But it's it's more applicable against control, and they already have like Mortify and stuff to deal with it. I'm not sold. When you play those sort of cheap non-creature permanents, you want them to be like guaranteed to stick on the battlefield. I guess you're bringing in some negates that you can protect it with, so maybe it's good. All right. Seems underpowered to me. Got a quick one for us while Ross is drawing his hand. Uh, why no D Spark either? This card's bad. So That's the Nebraska's contempt in your sideboard. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of three mana planeswalkers you want to kill, and three mana creatures that sometimes contempt kills. You know, I, I mentioned in the White Weenie matchup being able to target Adanto Vanguard. Um, I think D Spark would be there for a very specific purpose, and you know, it's hard for me to gauge that going into week one, but it's definitely a card to consider. But yeah. you, it's not a, a like a generic card that you're going to plop in your sideboard and expect to be good. You need to have a real reason for it. All right, my hand's good. My oh, so is mine. Right, your turn. Watery Grave. I will play a Discovery. Uh, I think I don't want this, and I do want this. Okay, I've got a hero. You can go. All right, I will... Just shock it. Play this and say go. Okay. Um, I will play a Teferi and plus. Okay. You can. In response, I'm gonna yeah. cast not. Uh, I'll keep it. Untap. Draw. I'll play a Crackling Drake. Your turn.
Um, okay, bounce the Drake. Our card. Play a thief. I could have played a thief last turn, but I really didn't want to get it shocked again, which would have been a nightmare. All right, we're gonna play a Sahili and a Lava Coil. Get a servo. Here you go. Uh, let's, I guess I can wait on that, actually. It's a plus this, and, mm -hmm. yeah, Deputy the Sahili. Okay. And pass the turn. Let's keep putting Todd to the test to have removal spells. Yep. Uh, Beacon Bolt the Deputy. Ugh. So I get Sahili back. Uh, I'm going to attack to Fairy for one. Then I'll play a Chart of Course, make another Servo. Draw two. Yep. Play my land. And step all discovery. Sure. Of course, he's able to do that because uh, Teferi's plus one lets him play instant or sorceries at instant speed. One in the graveyard and draw one. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that there is potential to play uh, this Drake's deck with splashing white for Teferi Time Raveler. Sure. My bad. I think that. Uh, the static effect is very strong, especially with uh, in combination with Sahili, because a lot of times you just need to know that the minus is safe. Yep. Uh, you've got four cards in hand, one of which is a Crackling Drake. Mm -hmm. The Sahili is very tough to deal with. Mm -hmm. I know there's a beacon bolt there. Okay, thief and deputy, the two servo tokens. That's pretty good. You can go. Just trying to keep Todd's board clear. Hopefully, pull ahead here so I can start pressuring this Sahili. But that's going to be tough to do. All right, just play a crackling Drake. Draw a card. And I will lava coil the thief and get a servo. Here we go. Trying to do the God Eternals yet? Yep. Tilt. <laughs> Pretty good. That's what I what I scried off of this thing, but it was more mana efficient to do it this way and wait for your Drake. I'm gonna shock myself to 18. I'm gonna enter the God Eternals to 22. Mill me, mill me, mill me. I will not be doing that. <laughs> Deal with the Drake. Okay. Will myself uh, for a couple lands and a Tyrant Scorn. Uh, so we get an army. It has four counters on it. Um, this got. Has this been plussed yet? No. No. Let's plus it and attack the Sahili and pass the turn. And one card? Yep. Draw. Oh, you put the Drake in the graveyard. Okay. Yeah, it's dead. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to get blown out here, so... Let's uh, Beacon Bolt the zombie. Get a token. I kind of just want to attack Teferi for one and not minus the Sahili. Because I'm pretty sure if I play Enigma Drake, he's going to kill it uh, in response to this. I guess it's still trading for the Enigma Drake because he's not going to target this and leave the Enigma Drake around with only one card in hand. Maybe he will to, to I don't know, whatever. All right. Play this minus target. These two. Yep. All right, attack to fairy. Oh, okay. Go. End step discovery. Sure. That is not the worst set of draws. This is a card that helps me check the Sahili. I'm hoping Todd is kind of out of removal at this point. You got three in hand, though? 
uh, and will buy me some time. So yeah, I'm gonna keep both of these. Okay, so you draw one and then you untap draw the other. Hero and to enter the God Eternals. Uh, hero into Teferi. It's pretty good too. And I will minus on the Enigma Drake. Play another hero. It's pretty good. And attack the Sahili. All right, I think I chump with the servo because the ability to copy a Drake is more important. That's the turn. Uh, but I'm I'm not a hundred percent on that. I actually no, I'm not. I'm just gonna let the Eli get a one. Okay. All right, draw for turn. All right, I'm just gonna play two Drakes. I think draw. Play a Drake. We don't make servos, but we have four blockers, and Ross has no cards in hand. Just hoping he bricks one turn, and then we get to untap and maybe do some cool stuff. Yep. Not a bad line. Come on, Hostage Taker. Yeah. Or, you know, Godless Shrine. Oh, yeah. They're the same thing. Basically. Plus this. Have no good attacks, and now I'll get my board decimated. Mm, I don't have removal yet. I mean... All right, let's discovery, get a servo, Been two lands, draw. All right, and right now these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I can hit you for, oh, you don't have flyers. Dead. Yeah, I'm going to play another Sahili, turn a servo into a, a Drake and hit you for 27. Yep. So we saw there, Sahili was really strong in the early game, just providing some pressure. When Ross ran out of stuff, then I jumped it, turned it into a Drake to kill a Teferi, and then the second uh, Sahili actually just killed him. It went from 18 damage on one attack to 27. And I think that like the the dual nature of the card playing defense early on slash providing pressure against control deck is really powerful. And then the like combo kill potential as the game goes along just makes the card a dynamite in my yeah opinion. i mean i just com got completely obliterated by it uh to fairy like you know it gave me this minor edge in the early game but then i just wasn't able to ever cement that yeah you know i, I you would just replay your drake and i don't get any i don't get far enough uh ahead to, to really do anything i was never able to st even stall long enough to get a second activation out of it if you're able to just uh set up a way to kill it uh I don't know. This is, has not felt good in the first couple of games, but we will uh, cut to some sideboarding and hopefully turn it around in the last couple. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere uh, versus live more after this. All right. We're back here trying to figure out sideboarding. Ross is still working his last couple cuts out, so I'll just do mine. Pretty simple. Uh, while Spell Pierce is potentially good in a lot of spots, uh, there's a chance it just gets completely blank, like we saw in game two when Ross has a Teferi. It's also one of those cards that, as the game goes longer, just gets worse and worse and worse, and I expect fully that these games are going to go quite a long time, so I just want more heavy hitters as, as we go. Uh, now, I, I have three heavy hitters in the sideboard that I am trying to figure out if I actually want or not, and that's uh, two more Niv, or sorry, two Niv and a, a, a route is it Viceroy, and I think I have enough threats with Mystic, uh, the eight Drakes, and the six Planeswalkers in my main deck, uh, and if I ever have my Niv Mizzet Hostage taker, the game ends, so I'm very scared of that happening, whereas if any of the other ones get hit, they're not that big, it's not a huge deal, so I'm, I'm going to be doing this, uh, you know, there's a chance that I want to bring in the Rao because the, the minus killing most of Ross's creatures is okay, but uh, on the draw, I, I don't know, it's, I mean, maybe it's hard enough to kill, all right, I'm going to maybe try to bring in, bring it in and cut one other thing, but I don't want to cut any of my instant or sorceries. Uh, on my side, we're bringing in some more efficient removal for Todd's threats. We've got some cast downs, some contempts that can deal with the planeswalkers directly, which is very nice. And then a couple duresses to clear the way uh, and maybe clear the way of Todd's removal, which is really uh, problematic. Uh, I'm trimming some of my other removal spells that aren't as flexible as what we're bringing in. We don't want to overload on them because then you just lose to the planeswalkers. Um, so you can't just right. you can't really approach them like you would have Drake's six months ago and just try to kill all their creatures because of the way Todd's deck is built. I don't think Soren is particularly impactful in this matchup. You know, uh, most of our best threats are going to get Lava Coiled. 
uh, and so they, he can't return them, and like, plussing it doesn't do a whole lot, and it's pretty easy for the flyers to attack down and kill it. Dovin makes some blockers, but it's hard for me to create a big enough board that the plus one is relevant, so I think that also gets cut. And then I ended up deciding trimming one Mortify and not bringing in the last Hostage Taker. I don't want to flood on Hostage Takers, but I definitely want them in my game as, in my deck as the game goes long, yeah. because once I have a bunch of mana and, yeah. uh, uh, on the battlefield, to, like Todd can't really do anything with it in response. He doesn't have Lightning Strike or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's got Beacon Bolt and Lava Coil, which is sorceries. Uh, yeah, if once, wanted... you, once you hit 8-mana, it's just nuts. Yeah, so I, I definitely want some number of them, but I don't want to have like, two in my opening hand. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave the two in the main deck, and I'll trim a Mortify. Might be a little light on removal here, but I do think I need to be threat dense, because I need an advantage on the battlefield. Uh, otherwise, my Teferis are just not going to do a whole lot. All right. I'm going to cut one Enigma Drake for the uh, the Rao. I found myself the previous two games drawing just like uh, one too many Drakes, and Enigma gets get completely holstered by uh, the Teferi. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's hit some questions. Hacksaw76 wants to know, how do you think Drake's fair versus the McNexus? Uh, I think game one is a bit tough. We only have three spell pierce that can potentially um, interact. Uh, but after sideboard, once you get Narset's Reversal, Negate, Disangeful Stroke, these counter spells, when you start backing up clocks like uh, um, Drake's with counter spells, the Nexus deck starts to get a lot, a lot worse. I just imagine what it would feel like to cast Narset's Reversal on Nexus of Fate. Yeah, dude, it's, I, I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine. I have not like done it yet. Dream. But um, that's why it's there. It's there for the deck because I don't. I'm not bringing in against like Esper Control. I don't think like, oh, a bunch yeah. of chemistry <laughs> draw through. Like that's the best it gets. <laughs> Copy your Kai's Wrath. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Oops. Let's take a look at this opener. Uh, no blue mana, so probably gonna ship it back. I'm on the draw, but I'm just gonna go ahead and save some time. Uh, more questions. I mean, given that Ross would be bringing in a bunch of spells in a more mid range deck like this compared to the control deck, would is reversal like actually a thought? I mean, so I don't need to do it. It doesn't but... actually counter, right? It it bounces back to the hand, which is a pretty fine play, but you need to have like I think it's really good against Raska's Contempt. It's okay against things like Duress and Cast Down and Thought Erasure, but you need to gain a significant amount of tempo from the returning it to their hand for it to matter. And most of Ross's spells only cost one or two mana. You really want Narset's reversal for decks that have explosion. Uh, chemisters and uh, or Nexus of Fate, like those big flashy instant sorcerers, so you get to stall them for a turn and do the thing yourself, and it'd be really powerful. It's almost entirely for Nexus of Fate. That's like what it's designed to just completely There is Enter blast. the God Eternals. It's quite good against that one. Sure. I mean, it's possible. You know, I'll bring it in for flashiness sake. I don't care. Whatever. It's, counter Spells are also just kind of bad against the yeah. very time route. I, I, I don't so. think it's great in this matchup, but okay. it, it is good against Enter the God Eternals. Sure. All right. Uh, are, are you mulliganing? Or yes. Are sweet? you? No, my hand's fine. Okay, and I'm on the draw, and this six is keepable, so... Hey, perfect. Okay, I slow the chapel. Uh, go. And Glacial Fortress. Mm, go. Thought Erasure. He wants to heal I assume. Yep. Okay. Now, we didn't cast Chart, of course, because mm -hmm. I want to go Shock, Untap, Place to Healy mm -hmm. if he played something. No land. up, please. Okay. okay, sorry. I'll play Enigma Drake. I'm sure it's about to get bounced by Tiffery. Um. Yeah, I just want to make land drops after I've missed one, so I'm fine trading it for a shock and getting a card. Right, I'm so shocking myself 18. 18. You can go. I don't even really want to shock it right this moment. Yeah, you do have a... Have a, a but I guess if you draw Thought Erasure, you'll just take my shock, and then I can't kill Teferi probably, so... Yeah, we'll go Enigma Drake and shock the Teferi. Nah, I assumed you were just going to leave it up. Oh, yeah, you can't. I can't. Yeah. yeah. True, true, true. No, that's why Teferi's sweet. It just, like, eliminates options from your opponent while being this really cool tempo play. Okay, I address you. Hey, I was right. Take the chart, of course. Also, didn't really have anything I wanted to discard with chart, of course, which is why I didn't ever cast it. Address you, take the lava coil. Sure. And cast down this thing. Sure. You can go. Yeah, now I just really need to draw a threat. 
All right. Um, let's go. Fast turn. Let's go. Feeling this game is going to go long. It's not a bad draw, though. It's fairy plus. Yep. Draw a course. Yep. This card lands. Play name Drake, your turn. Um, this is one of the reasons why we trimmed an Enigma Drake. It is the worst threat in the matchup, but it's still a threat. Bounce it. Draw a card. Continuing to try to make land drops here. Pass the turn. All right, so... Say go. Turn to turn. Contempt it. All right. So you're at... I'm at 22. 20. Have you at 20 because you shocked? Oh, I shocked. Yeah, you're good. 20 to 18. Go. And plus and pass. Go. End of turn. Enter the God Eternals. Yeesh. Is that good? It's pretty good. Do I want that? All right. So you're at 24 and you get a 4 4. Yeah. Milled a bunch of spells. But I feel pretty far ahead at this point. Uh, we'll see if that continues. Plus this and attack. 16 to 24. I do 18. Did I put a shock on you that should have been on me? Probably. What do you yes, have, Rob? Did. I haven't taken any damage this game. Yeah, I did. Okay. Was a 20 there. Okay, that's what happened. Um, I will pass the turn. All right, Lava Coil the token. Sure. Play another Ning Drake. Here we go. Uh, oh, that's good. You didn't have another end of the God Eternals. That nope. Been problematic. Uh, bounce it. Yep. Pass the turn. Landing Drake. Yep. Say go. Mortify it. Okay. All right. Come on, deck. Uh, plus two. Or plus two, two. Uh, play Seraph and you can go. See if you got a lava coil here. Play a Discovery. Oh, graveyard this, draw this. No. Oh. Or I'm gonna not play this. I'm just gonna lava coil the seraph. I am going to. It's kind of afraid he had a removal spell here for it, but cast down the seraph and get some tokens so I can start applying some pressure. Okay. Um. I'm gonna say go. Plus attack for two. 14 to 24. You can go. Draw. I will play an Ops. Yep. I will bottom a Shock. Wait, I'm stupid. I should have kept the Shock and just killed the Teferi last turn. I suck. Oh, I'm so bad. Try to course. Yep. Uh, your turn. Don't really want to burn Beacon Bolt on the Spirits. Just kind of want to save it for two. something that might be a little more problematic. Your 12. Yep. My land and plus this to Fairy. You can go. Cast Knobs. Yep. I'll keep this one. I'll play a Rowl. Yep. I will minus the row. Yep. I will play a shock targeting a spirit token, trigger row twice, make a copy, kill the other one, deal two to Teferi. That's not good. Okay, your turn. That's not good at all. Just pluses to scry. Yep. It's not a very powerful plus. Uh, uh definitely doing that. And um 
You can go. Uh, sorry, plus two, sky yep. one, bottom of the land, uh, say go. Uh, Deputy the Rowl. Okay. Minus to Fairy on the Deputy. Okay. Draw a card. Okay. Play it to Fairy. Yep. Uh, I know you have a beacon bolt, so I can't really do anything about deputying the Rowl. Um, so I guess I'll just try to draw some more cards. Deputy the Rowl. Okay. Bounce it again. Okay. Whee! You can go. Draw for turn. Yep. I will scry one. Bottom of land. I will play a Healy Sublime Artificer. Yep. Sorry, this should be six. This on five. And here you go. And now we're in this weird spot where I my planeswalkers are just like threatening a lot of stuff, but I need I kind of need Ross to like play a creature for me to get much value. Well, but that was a good draw. Um but I don't know which one of these I should answer. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh probably the Rao because Sahili's relatively checked by deputy. And Rao so sitting in play actually helps me find stuff, whereas Sahili just kind of yeah. does nothing. I agree. Deal with the Rao. I got a 26. Okay. 26 and to 12. Pass the turn. Untap. Draw. Any cards in hand? Four. Go. Plus. And I guess we can start trying to work through. Some of this removal. We're going to play a thief. Yep. I think I'm going to minus now. Maybe I should just wait. You're not going to be able to deal damage to it unless you have a shock. And if you're, you're going to shock the... Yeah, you've already gone through three shocks and you'd shock thief anyway. Uh, and I can just deal with a token that way. Yeah, I'll just play the thief and pass. Stick up, right? Because uh, you were going to minus, get... right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's stick up. All right, draw. All right, I can't slow roll because of Teferi's ability, so we'll just make a servo. Yep. Bottom land, draw. I will go ahead and beacon bolt the thief of sanity, get another servo. Okay, happy to have dealt with a beacon bolt this way. And I'll play a land, say go. Let's see, two in hand? Yep. I think you can safely assume at least one is a land because I would hold the island for the beacon bolt. For whatever that's worth. Um, okay, so let's... Uh... Hmm. I guess I can just plus and pass. Okay. Yeah, just plus and pass. Draw for turn. Yep. Um, attack to ferry for two. Goes three. All right. Second main play a discovery. Yep. Bend the land. Keep one. Go. Okay. End step, enter the God Eternals on the untapped token. I'm wondering if I'm supposed to just mill Todd. At this point, your things are gigantic anyway, and we're both so loaded up on removal. I do have one more beacon bolt in my deck. The I game don't... might come down to decking. Yeah. 17, 19, 20. I have 26. Okay. I, you... I, I'm going to deck well before you. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, my... 
Yeah, you have 24, so going two bullets. But I'm also fine, just going to draw a bunch of yeah, cards exactly. before the game's over. So I'll, I'll mill myself. Okay. Sure. Um, I got a zombie. That thing's down. I'm up four life. Yep. I'm at 30. So 30 to 12. Yes. Okay. Go to my turn. Uh, attack the Sahili. Okay. I'm fortunate that I'm one short on that. Uh, I guess I can... So my plan here is to deputy these servers away and then bounce it with Teferi and draw another card. I could have done that pre-combat, hit another enter, but... And eh, whatever. Uh, deal with those. Bounce the deputy because I don't want it dying. Uh, draw. And play another Teferi. Okay. And a plus. Pass the turn. Draw the turn. Play Crackling Drake. Yep. Draw a card. Um, play Murmuring Mystic. Yep. Go. Uh, actually, that's probably... I'm, I'm not going to play this. Sorry. Okay. Are you going to Beacon Bolt something? Or? I'm thinking... I'm going to hold the land, too. One second. All right, so play the Crackling Drake, and now I can Beacon Bolt to kill the 4-4 four four and make a token, which makes it very unlikely Ross can kill Sahili. And I think that that is more important than saving stuff. All right, so I'm going to discard an island, create a servo, and say go. No reason for me to end step a removal spell here when I can draw hero and get a token out of it. Speak of the devil. Um, okay, let's play a hero. Let's mortify the... Ugh. Maybe, maybe I can't mortify that crackling drake. Hold on. I, that murmuring mystic is looming. You don't know it's there. Scum cheater. <laughs> okay, get a token. Um, where are they? There they are. And I guess plus this and pass the turn. Okay. Drop. Crackling Drake. Yep. Okay, deck. Like the bottom. 20 cards in my deck are almost all spells. It's crazy. All right. Your turn. Just trying to put up a defense for Sahili to try to keep it around as long as possible. That is really good. Okay. Um, how big is that crackling, Greg? Uh, 15. Well, if he's bouncing it, that is great news for me. That means he ain't got nothing. Draw a card. Yeah. Thought erasure, you get a token. Uh, leave that one on top. Deputy, get a token. Hit. I think I should just hit the Mystic. Basically, like it. I'm going to deal with Sahili either way. Uh, and this way, if Todd has a removal spell for Deputy, he like doesn't get the token off of it, so I'm get, getting a token anyway. Yep. But I'm getting a bird token this time, and if he doesn't have a token, then dealing with the 1-5 is great. Because anyway, You're he, empty? Empty-handed. 16 right. lands in play. Oh, really? Wow. 15, I think. Yeah, I think we might have might have done it. I mean, I've drawn nothing for five turns. So. Attack for five. <laughs> or Eleven. Or sorry, uh, seven. Seven. Um, am I supposed to present lethal with a? Probably. This. I don't think so. Okay. You can go. Go. Do 
Deputy this thing, get a token, attack for five. That two. Plus to fairy, play yep. land, and pass the turn. <laughs> well, we might be able to cascade here and do something. I'm at... You're two. Two? Um, all right, I'm going to row minus on the one with the other crackling drake. Draw a card. Uh, Wobble cool, this deputy. Get this back, play land, and I'm dead to the Teferi minus. Yeah, if you don't have a spell. Okay, yep. Well, oh, I don't. You knew yeah. I didn't. That was quite the game. Yeah, that was um, sweet. We're a little over 4 o'clock at this point, so I think we'll end here at a 2-1 win for you. But things what? went... No, I lost the game because I didn't play around my own oh, shot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you won. You won the marbles. Why do you think I'm mad? I completely forgot that I had one game one. In my head, I just lost that game. Yeah, I I could have played it a lot safer. I just yeah. I didn't realize you actually had seven power when I was at nine, and the Steve of Sanity connecting was a pretty huge deal. Um, I'd say. And you you like when I was playing the fourth Drake, there's like no way that attacking with all three is correct. Like I, yeah. it's just it just can't possibly be correct. So, um, I don't know. I uh, also probably should have like charged a course after combat instead of before because I'm just like doing. I don't know. I, I messed that game up pretty bad, but I really like the look of it. I'll say that this this is a Drake sack felt really strong in in a lot of spots. Um, the problem is like I burned through a bunch of card draw early, and uh, I didn't have any way like Murmuring Mystic or Narset or not Narset, uh, Sahili to actually generate the advantage while casting those draw yeah. spells. And then we get later in the game, my deck is like, you know, I only had like six lands left in my deck uh, by like turn 10 or 12 or so, which is like, you know, it's, I, was, eh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Long story short, even though I was able to like draw crack, multiple crackling drakes, it just wasn't enough to catch me up. Yeah, you, you're never able to really get the ball rolling yeah you know, like you you nudged a little bit and you needed you know one more opt chart of course to yeah. really get it going i think the i need to cut just all my enigma drakes because of how bad they are against teferi and just bring in uh like more nivs because the games go super long and yeah. just hope that i never get put in the spot where you actually get to just completely brown me with a uh, a hostage taker and because Niv's also great at cleaning up those tokens that hero leaves around and i'm not always going to be able to kill the hero immediately and sometimes off the top you can go hero into discovery thought erasure or mortify or whatever and generate two tokens and those two tokens just kind of stick and yeah they're pretty annoying it's hard for you to play like fiery candidate to deal with those because you're making a bunch of tokens yourself yeah. so not a card that you want to play but niv it would do it yeah that, that last game is really good um it definitely helped for me having a little bit more removal and forcing the game to go long, but I needed I needed a powerful card like Niv too, and I didn't really have it. Yeah. Um, you know, normally I have the Elders Reborn in that spot, but it's so bad against your tokens I didn't want it. Yeah. So that's a slot that could come and be something that uh, is more suitable towards these mid-range mirrors, because that's the kind of thing that can happen against Soltai too, and then the Soltai player is just going to draw Hydra Crisis, and I'm not going to draw anything you know, uh, that, that's, that's that effective. So I need to be able to close the game or have some other big threat, and I think I'm missing that right now. Mm -hmm. um, but that Teferi still just continues to do awesome stuff. I love that I just don't have to worry about you on my turn. Like, yeah, no, I'm like I, bouncing my own stuff to draw cards, and you can never break it up with removal spells. And yeah, I was I was playing against uh, Esper Control last night with this like weird Bant Teferi deck that I built with Time Raveler, and I would just like play it a little like kind of early. And then on my turn, it's like, well, I can send exactly five damage at Teferi, uh, Hero of Dominaria, because they can't cast a Mortify with their three mana they have untapped. Yep. So that was really cool. And the, the end of step, enter the God Eternals to dodge Beacon Bolt for a turn. Let me deal four to the Sahili. That was really critical. Yeah. So a, a lot of, again, a lot of little things those Teferis were doing. They clogged my hand a little bit. Um, but uh, you were able to translate them into fresh, fresh cards eventually. Yeah. And just fresh deputies to check your your servos. Yep. And you're never behind. Like Teferi never costs you a card. So you know, even if the effect is marginal, it's free marginal value that you're yep. getting. So still very impressed by that card. I, I like your idea of just cutting the, the Enigma Drakes and being a more like Planeswalker. Well, I'm in mean after sideboard, not yeah. necessarily yeah, in, after in game ones. Yeah, I think the Enigma Drakes are quite good. Though there is, it's possible that you could just be like an Izet more mid rangey slash control deck play uh like Sahili and and Raul Storm Conduit 
uh, and go up to like Niv Mizzet and play like um, search for a Scanta too. Search for a Scanta main deck, yeah, and that that'll help because you, it doesn't need to be an instant or sorcery for Sahili. It just needs to be a non land card uh, or non creature spell rather. Yeah. And so like you know you can play it doesn't you know not treasure map but like you know you could play treasure map in the deck with Sahili and that would be fine. So. I don't know. There's a, there's a lot to like about this deck. Um, there's a lot to work on for sure, but I definitely like the direction it's going with the Planeswalkers. It yeah. felt really good. I think it makes you a lot more resilient. I don't like the... I think the plan of just, you know, spell piercing or dive dining, the removal and getting them with Drakes is not, wasn't working. You need to do something yeah. different. That is something I, different, and that looks good. Yeah, I mean, spell pierce is, is obviously not that great in this matchup because a lot of your interaction yeah. is creature based. But against like Esper, uh, you definitely want that kind of Esper an, an effect. Nexus and Azorius Aggro. Right, it's it's a solid card. So definitely something you want to main deck. Just awkward here. It'd be awkward against Soul. Right. Well, welcome back. Nothing new. <sighs> Winning the marbles. Yeah. Even though we only got to play three games instead <laughs> of four. Oh, yeah. we played four, and I don't know. Um, uh, whatever. You can have them. I didn't want them anyway. I, I saved them for you. Just so yes, you know, because Emma took them from me the first yeah, time. So I watched I the back first show the that, that Emma was on. You you, you both did a, an excellent job. I was Thank happy you. seeing that. And um, hopefully we get some more special guests in the future when one of us is uh, out of town. Um, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm just sitting, <laughs> sitting around forever. Just, you know, I'm never going to Pro Tour ever again. So. Oh, you, you'll you get one <laughs> of those MCQs on Magic Online at once, right? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? They're hard. Yeah, they are. I, I've been, you know, I play them when I'm at home. Like, I, it's not like I've never played an MCQ in the last couple of years. Like, yeah. I, if I'm at home, I'm playing. Well, we can go play I mean, a paper one in uh, in North Carolina. Yeah, it's one at Atomic Empire. But. Yeah, sounds like fun. Uh, any any uh, pressing questions? Anybody curious about Ross's deck? Uh, you know, anybody curious about Drake? Uh, we've or anything? had several people ask you about Mizium Tank, and I believe get out. Yeah, I was going to say the card's not a good card. Didn't like it. You know. Uh, nah. It's it's just Enigma Drake, but keeps shrinking at the end of the turn. Yeah, well, you know, it's like Invade the City, except probably worse. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably worse than both of those cards. I don't even know why that card exists. I don't get it. Yeah, it's like not, if, if it's it was a like a 4 3 that, like, whenever you cast an sorcery, you like ping something for one, like, that would be dope. But it's like, oh, just plus one, plus one. Great. I have, I have eight things that already do that. Yeah, no, that, that's, that one's a bad one. 12 things that already so. do that. Next question. Uh, what about Augur of Bullets? You're just off that entirely? Uh, I'm not off it. I was trying a version without it. Uh, I think when you play this many Planeswalkers, your actual hits on Augur go significantly down. Um, and the, the body was just, like, mostly negligible. So there's a chance that, like, it's just good enough because of... of of what it represents a lot of times. It turns on chart course, which is really important on occasion. Um... I'm not off it. I think the card is spectacular. I just in this particular version, I felt like the there were too many misses. Yeah, you need the the bar for number of instants and sorceries for Augur is pretty high. It's yeah. like bare minimum twenty four, and you really want t high twenties. Yeah, I think this one has like twenty two. Yeah, so you, you, it takes a very specific deck to want that kind of card. If you were a little bit more controlling and you cut the Enigma Drakes. Maybe you could find room for some augers and have some niv mizzets. Yeah. Um, but then you want more lands too, so you still don't have a lot of room. Yeah. See, it's, and, it's that, and that's the problem. Walkers. It just compounds. Like the more the more you try to get stuff in, like the harder it becomes to to make auger good. Like, you know, that's why people think. I mean, that's why like maybe invade the city is actually better in a version with auger than something like Enigma Drake, even though it doesn't fly. It can be found off of auger of bolus. It's a hit. Right? Yeah. And the second uh, Invade the City often has, like, virtual haste because it pumps onto the first one, which is really cool. So, who knows? Uh, I, I, I do think that um, uh, Augur Bulls is very good, though. So. Uh, and then, um, so what are your predictions for what will be the most popular deck? So when Nick Miller makes his metagame breakdown on day two, what do you think is going to be number one? I think White Weenie just got better and was the dominant aggro deck, and aggro is always really good in week one. Um, mm. well, White aggro, Sultai, Simic Nexus, probably your top three in some order. Yeah, sure. I think that that would be where I am. What Which order, not really sure, but I think those three will be a little bit above anything else. It would be a pretty significant break. Yeah. Uh, like, I think people are going to be trying a lot of new stuff, and whenever that's the case, like, you just get hammered in week one if you're playing against mono red or, or mono white or whatever like they just capitalize on every single stumble you make so yeah and i think gideon's really good 
I do think Gideon's good too. We didn't get to see a ton of Gideon. Um, I think Gideon's going to shine against control. I, I took it with my discard spells every time. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, you did just strip them, strip them down. But uh, we're going to wrap it here. Uh, that's going to be all for Versus Live today. We are going to be coming back on Thursday, though. I'm going to be on the flip side where I'm going to be picking the deck. I will likely play in Richmond. And then uh, we're going to be running against three decks that uh, Ross brings to the table that he thinks will accurately represent three of the top decks. We're probably going to have one, maybe two overlaps in the three decks that I did. But more than likely, Ross is going to find three other decks that he thinks will also see a lot of play. Just kind of give you a better representation overall of what you might play against. So, you know, think think like a, a mono red, uh, some other like oh, mid range yeah, deck, deck, and then and then finish off with maybe Esther Control or something yeah, like we'll that. Figure, so. We'll figure that out tonight, tomorrow. Get yeah. it all set up for you for Thursday here, 1 p.m. Eastern, the same time, 1 to 4. And then this weekend, we got SCG Richmond. Yep. Uh, Cedric, Patrick, Jerry, and Brian in the booth bringing you coverage all weekend. Todd and I will be at the tables doing some battling. I'm going to be on camera round one because I don't have any buys. Yep. I'm going to be playing Sweet Deck, and I'm not going to last very long in the tournament. I think if you're playing Reclamation, I... Or Nexus, I guess. Nick's not going to put you on. I'm not one, playing but... Nexus. I would never play Nexus. I have a fundamental hatred of the card. Do I you, didn't know that was Do you true. know how stupid it would be to make a proxy to put in your deck because you can't physically buy a copy of the card that does not require you to make a proxy for your deck? Yeah, they'd never do that. No, they did do that. I would never put it in my deck. I would wrap... You, okay, first of all, I never have. I was sorry, I think one time in my entire life I played with checklist cards. One time. Yeah. Every other horrible. time I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna buy black sleeves. I don't, you know, don't care anymore. Just don't want to do that. Yep. That's stupid. Just oh, I gotta have a bunch of cards in my sideboard that are in my deck. Okay. All right. No, I, I hate it too. I'm with you. I just like that you've reached the age where like you don't care about maximizing your odds in the tournament. Like Nexus could be the best deck. And you're just like, no, I'm not going to do that. I will. I, you're just there. You're going to enjoy yourself, play the deck you want. And if you win, it's great. That's, so, a, that's a great place to be. I have become Greg Hatch. I don't know if you, I, I like about uh, eight years ago or so, I watched Greg playing this like stupid Ninja, the deep hours deck and like legacy or something. At an open. Frost. Yeah. And I just, I looked at him and he's like, he's, you know, uh, four and one or whatever and he just like takes a second loss to some you know brainstorm deck or whatever and I just look at him like dude you could just win these tournaments if you played a real deck ever and he looks at me he's just like yeah but I wouldn't have any fun and now I'm just that that's just yeah. me now you're not quite at salvage titan level <sighs> I'm trying. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying. You know, and I, you know, I, my decks are sweet. Yeah. And they, they, they work sometimes. And honestly, Team of Reclamation kind of stepped it up at the end of the season when, when uh, we got to the Pro Tour. I know Pascal Maynard wrote about it, and a lot of people picked it up on, on Magic Arena yeah. and had a blast with it and won with it. So I had a blast with it the one time I played yeah. too. So you, you keep doing you. I'm trying. I'm a fan. You know, so once every blue moon, it's, the iron is hot. Yeah. <laughs> And we strike. Once every blue moon, you realize that Fall of the Titan is the card you were missing. <laughs> and is that the card? Yes. And it was great. Yeah. And you got to Pyromancer, his goggles people. Ooh, that deck was great. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, enough reminiscing. Thanks for watching Versus Live from StartsToGames.com. That's Ross Merriam. I'm Todd Anderson. And we'll see you Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Later. Later.